In today's video, we're going to cover animal behaviors. So there are four types of animal behaviors included currently in version one of Game Guru Max. The uh, insects, uh, which would cover you know butterflies, bees, and wasps. There's mammals, which uh, all mammals really. Uh, there's fish, and then there's birds. So let's take a look at the insects first. So here we see we have a butterfly. Now your butterfly is going to need to have animations included. There's this butterfly came stock with the uh, the game, so I'm just using the stock uh, model, and uh, it has the um, the behavior attached to it automatically. Um, and we'll go over that behavior in just a moment. We kind of see how that works, and he's just going to fly around randomly um, in that general area. Uh, you can see off in the distance over here, we have a skunk. Let me get a little closer. And he's just wandering about, uh, doing his thing. Now, you know, he has an animation that's part of the model. The behavior is what's telling him to just wander around. It's also telling him, if I get close, I need to run away. So that's his uh, response to me getting close. Uh, thankfully, it's not to spray me. <laughs> it's, I don't want to smell that even virtually. Uh, let's see here. Here we have the docks that I made, and hopefully we'll be able to catch a glimpse of the fish. They may have already swam away. Oh, there he goes. Let's see if we can catch up with him. There he is. So he's just kind of wandering around the lake. Uh, there's another one in here somewhere, but he's wandering about. So you can populate your uh, your lake or your water scenes with fish, and they'll move around on their own. Uh, the last type, uh, well, actually, there's two more. Uh, there's insects, uh, so like bees and wasps. In this case, I have a couple bees set up. And if we get close to this bush, you can see the bee flying there. It's kind of faint, but you can see them kind of moving around. I'm sure there's another one around here somewhere. Um, and I apologize, that sounds a little annoying, so I'm going to get away from the bush. Uh, and then lastly, we have our bird. So you can see the bird. He's kind of standing up there on top of uh, the porch uh, overhang. And if I just walk up, it flies away. So there it goes. So how is that done? Let's take a closer look at the actual behaviors. So I'm going to press escape and close the preview mode of the game. Uh, so here, let's start with our, uh, our butterflies. You can see our butterfly here. Um, now, the stock image butterfly was bigger than this. I think I reduced it down to 50% the, uh, the, the scale um, at the time, just to make it a little more realistic looking. Um, and then here, you can see physics is off. In order to apply a, any behavior to any object, you want the, the physics uh, either on or off. You don't want it to be a static image, in, in other words, right? a static model. So for instance, if we look at this car and I click on that, we can see that it's static. And because of that, I can't add a behavior. So it needs to be either physics on or physics off. Um, if you have physics on, um, then you want to consider some of these other options like, you know, is it, uh, is it a mobile? yes or no and, and what kind of collision shape it has and so on but this uh this butterfly has its physics off and that's really just so it'll continue to fly and not knock into anything um and then here's the behavior so uh this is probably the well it actually is the most complex of the four animal behavior types um so all the other ones are going to be very easy kind of plug and play uh, but i'll show you those in a moment here I've got it selected to butterfly. I can also select bee or wasp. I'm, I'm not really sure what the difference is, to be perfectly honest, between the two behaviors. I just didn't observe any noticeable difference. But feel free to leave a comment if you uh, observed a difference in the, in the behavior there that you want to tell everybody about. Uh, the temperament's benign. You can also turn it to aggressive. So if I do that, if I turn it to aggressive and I play the game and I get close to the butterfly, it'll hurt me. Um, that's really what that means. Uh, the boundary is just really its range, its distance from its uh, point of origin. So I didn't want it to fly too far 
because then I'd lose it and wouldn't be able to show you the, the butterfly flying around. So I gave it a range of 25. Could have even restricted that a little bit further. And then the sound, I mean, I've never heard a butterfly, so I didn't put any sounds uh, attached to the butterfly. So that's how that works. Uh, let's take a look at our friend, the skunk. So this one's a lot easier. Again, the animation is part of the model. So you don't really ha uh, have to worry about that as long as your model is rigged and has animations that it can play. Otherwise, it's really just going to stand there regardless of, the, of what the uh, behavior does. But as you can see, really the only uh, option you have with the mammal uh, generic uh, behavior is to use sound variants. I checked the box in this case because I really didn't know whether or not there were going to be sounds uh, associated with this uh, model or not. So I just said, why not? Uh, let's see, let's go take a look at the fish. Fish are basically the same thing. I mean, let's face it, all fish are basically going to do the same stuff, right? Uh, so here's one of the fish models. Um, I think these are all uh, the, yeah, the bass. Uh, but it doesn't matter. You know, you can put the salmon, it's going to act the same way. Um, and there's really no options, you know, included. It just swims around as it will. So very simple uh, and, and easy to, to kind of work with. Uh, let's go take a look at the B. Now I wanted to show you this because it's very much like the, um, the butterfly, except, um, in this case we want sound, right? We want that, that buzzing sound as you get close. And these might've been, you know, more aggressive. I chose to make them benign just so it wasn't distracting. Um, the boundary I, I removed, a you know, quite a bit. I wanted to keep them close to the bush. And then I chose not to apply the sound to the, the, uh, the model itself. And the reason was I noticed that uh, not only could I hear it pretty much wherever I went, it wasn't, it, it wasn't a matter of distance. I heard it all the time. It just continuously looped. Um, but it was, it, you know, it was, it was loud. I could go anywhere in the scene and still hear it. Um, so that was a little distracting. So what I did instead, that I think there's a couple different ways I could have approached this, but I chose to add an ambience zone. Um, and then uh, you can see I've kind of laid out the area where you might hear the, the bees in that bush. Um, and in this case, it's ambience in zone. There's another one that looks really similar. I want to show this to you. If I, if I click on, uh, it's going to let me, let's try this. Uh, let's see here. I want to show you fade in sound as well. But if we look at markers and see there's ambience and zone, there's also ambience once in zone. And to be honest with you, when I first saw that, I thought it was a typo. I didn't really read it very closely and I didn't really notice the difference in the image. These are definitely two distinct behaviors. And the primary difference is this is only going to play once. So if I stepped into that zone, I'd hear the B and that's it. It would stop this looped over and over and over again. Um, so that's really the primary difference between the two. And that's, uh, you know, anywhere in the zone. If I step in the zone, that's what it plays. Um, here's the, uh, the options. Actually, let's look at the ambient zone. There we go. So the height, that's just, you know, a matter of um, if I was above it, it would still, I would still hear it. Uh, and then you can check the box to say only, uh, only play once in zone. That seemed to repeat, so I'm not sure that's actually working the way it's intended. Um, I could be wrong there. And then this is the only buzz sound I could find uh, default, you know, included in the software. So I just chose f uh, fly buzz. I'm sure you could find better uh, quality uh, sound files out there. There's a lot of great websites for that. Now, another way I could have approached this is I could have attached a fade in sound to this bush. I was experimenting with that a little bit as well. I think it works equally as well. You may not always have an object that, you know, is, is closely associated with uh, the sound that you're trying to play. So it may not always work in every instance, but in this case, I could have chose this. And then in this case, fade in sound just means that as I approach the bush, the sound would get louder. And as I, uh, you know, walk away from the bush, it would get uh, quieter. So that is another option. Uh, instead of the jarring kind of stepping into the zone and it immediately starts playing, it would fade in. And I think that would be a, a solid option as well. Um, let's take a look at the bird uh, last because the bird again is very simple, just like the mammal and the fish. There's not a lot to it. 
Um, I did want to try to scale this bird down because it's huge, but it doesn't seem to have an option to do that uh, in the character settings or in the positioning. See, it's all grayed out, so I couldn't scale it any further down, but it was fine. We wanted to be able to see it anyways. Um, again, these are just like what comes with the uh, the software. I'm sure if you're using your own models, uh, you can get a better result. Uh, but here you see the bird uh, behavior. And uh, again, I use sound variants just for the what ifs, but I didn't really notice any sound because really what you're hearing in the game when I play it is an ambient sound for the level itself, which just seems to come automatic with the forest level. Um, I'm sure there's a place to, to change that out, but in this case, I don't think I would have been able to distinguish the bird sounds from the 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 you know the level ambient sounds either. But very simple to apply. You just add the behavior right to the character, making sure that um, it is set to um, oh wait this is a little bit different in it i noticed this is a little bit different we <laughs> i don't know why but apparently we can make this bird an ally or an enemy but it flew away from me so i don't know what the difference would be in this case but okay enemy magpie it is um maybe that's why it flew away from me i don't know uh let's see here and really, that's that's all there is to it. You know, the animal uh, behaviors are all very simple. They they really don't care what they're attached to. So I'll give you another example. If I click on this car, we mentioned before that it's a static model. But if I change it to say physics off, um, then I'm able to add a behavior um, and see the bird behavior is already added. I could add insect. I could add whatever I want. In fact, let's try that. Let's add insect. Okay, boundaries, let's make sure that it doesn't go too, too far. Um, I'm not gonna put a sound in it, we'll keep it benign. Let's see what happens. There it goes. See, so the behavior is gonna act on the model regardless of what the model is, it doesn't know what it's attached to. So it's just gonna flutter around as if it's a butterfly. So pretty powerful stuff, a lot of things you can do with that. Uh, use your imagination, it doesn't have to be, you know, a butterfly, it doesn't have to be you know, uh, a mammal, you know, uh, study the behavior and say, well, how else can I apply this? What else can I do with it? Maybe it's a ghost, you know, or something like that. So have fun with it. Use your imagination. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, be sure to leave it in the comments. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.